Solstice season, quarter moon or full moon, flat earth versus globe earth. In this video, we're going to examine measurements we can make of the quarter moon uh, for the first half of the video, and then measurements you can make of the full moon in the second half of the video, uh, all in and around uh, the, either the June solstice or the December solstice. So let's take the quarter moon first. So in the quarter moon, it happens uh, twice in the moon's 28-day cycle. We, we call it first quarter and third quarter um, with the full moon in between. So let's uh, uh, zoom in on the first quarter. And uh, this obviously is not to scale. You know, we've got the Earth and, and the moon, um, and the moon is sort of at 90 degrees towards the, the sun. Uh, and the upper image is kind of what we would see from, from Earth. So this is in the, the globe Earth model. Uh, we have the sun off to the right, and the moon is at 90 degrees to the sun. All right. Meanwhile, in the flat Earth model, uh, we can't really uh, point out any kind of angles like this because the, the phases, uh, you know, the moon is not really illuminated by the sun in the flat Earth model, so you can't really make the same angular uh, measurements. All right, June and December solstice. So uh, what do the solstices mean? Well, the sun is directly above the Tropic of Cancer or the Tropic of Cap Capricorn in either the June solstice or the December solstice. Now, in the flat Earth model, uh, it means that the sun is literally above the latitude of that tropic. So here's a typical flat Earth model. Uh, so the sun is literally above uh, that, that tropic. Meanwhile, in the globe Earth model, the North Pole is tilted either towards or away from the sun. All right, so this is a, an illustration of what would be the June solstice, where the North Pole is tilted towards the sun, thus the sun is directly above the Tropic of Cancer. All right, now the equinox, uh, in comparison, the sun is above the equator. So in the globe Earth model, uh, it's like the tilt of the axis is sort of um, crosswise to the, to the sun. So the sun is illuminating uh, the, the Earth from pole to pole. All right. But then if we go, uh, you know, three months later uh, to the solstices, the sun is directly above, either, you know, one of the uh, one of the tropics. All right. So if we were to plot the first quarter of the June solstice, it, it's like the moon is in the same position relative to the sun that the Earth was. In other words, the the moon should be above the equator. Right. In the June solstice, the moon should be above the equator. Right. Uh, same with the December solstice, either the first quarter, you know, third quarter, June solstice, third quarter, December solstice. Uh, the moon should be above the equator on these solstices because the, the moon is like 90 degrees out of phase uh, with the sun. All right. The 90 degrees out of phase with respect to the, the sun and the, and the earth. So the moon is not exactly in the same plane. Again, this is the globe Earth model. The moon is not exactly in the same plane as the the sun and the earth all right so there is a little bit of a wiggle room it's only five degrees and sometimes the moon is above uh the sum the, the ecliptic plane and sometimes it's below it so we're going to say a plus or minus five degrees is our is our wiggle room okay so let's say this picture is of the solar noon equinox sun okay so that's the position of the sky uh, at solar noon on the equinox well, that means that three months later or three months earlier, um, the the June solstice or either the June solstice or the December solstice will be at that same location in the sky, plus or minus five degrees. So in other words, we have a little bit of wiggle room. All right, so that's that's what we're going to be going for. Now, what do we mean by solstice season? Well, solstice season because the the sun is moving so slowly relative to latitude. Um, in the, the June solstice and the December solstice, we can actually give ourselves a grace period of about plus or minus two weeks. All right, so in those blue rectangles, uh, that's, that's a pretty decent time for observing the moon, the quarter moon or the full moon. All right, so your challenge is to locate a quarter moon within two weeks of the solstice, and there, there should be actually two of them. Uh, and it could be a first or third quarter, it could be before or after uh, the solstice, and it could be either solstice. And what you're going to do is you're going to measure the angle of the elevation when the quarter moon crosses the meridian. In other words, you want, you want the moon to be at highest in the sky, so crossing your local meridian. You could call that a lunar moon, but that's not, you know, kind of like a solar noon. But lunar noon is, is not really technically accurate. 
And then you're going to bracket your observations up day before and day after when the moon is not exactly 50% at 50% illumination. So what you're going to find is the moon is not is rarely at 50% illumination exactly when it's crossing your meridian, meaning when it's highest in the sky, it's it's either going to be a little above 50 or a little below 50. So it's probably best if you do you know two observations over two days. All right, so let's use timeanddate.com to kind of plan our observations. So here's the first quarter, here's the third quarter. Um, so there's a June 13th, there's a third quarter moon, and again June 22nd, uh, approximately June 21st, 22nd is that was the solstice, and June 28th is a first quarter. All right, and it's at 4:15 in the morning, which is clearly not when the moon is crossing our meridian uh, for Philadelphia. So we will need to bracket that. All right. Another way of finding the, the quarter moons is in any calendar. Uh, this diagram is also from timeanddate.com. You know, just look for the symbol where it's um, half, you know, a half white and half black circle. So we're going to use a website called mooncalc.org to help plan our observation. Um, so we're going to plug in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and we're going to plug in the date of the actual um, uh, quarter. It's the first quarter. So we plugged in June 28th. Now there's the moon culmination is where it is highest in the sky. Okay, so there's the date. Moon culmination, um, if you click on that, it will actually tell you what the percent illumination is. Now because it's the first quarter, the moon is getting more and more illuminated every day. So this is actually what we call a waxing first quarter. So the moon is getting more illuminated day over day, which means that 57% and that's only going to go up. All right. So June 28th is not really a good day to make one measurement. We really should go one day before. Okay. So that's a problem. 57% illuminated, but that's it's getting more on June 28th. So we want to go for June 27th, the day before also. We want to make two observations over two days. All right. So again, I'm using the phrase lunar noon. That's sort of an informal term, term, but really it's when the moon crosses the meridian or when the moon is highest in your local sky. You're going to measure the angle of elevation of the, of the moon. And how are you going to do that? It's easy, really easy to do it using a cell phone app, such as Diopthrace for uh, Android, um, or uh, and then you're going to use the, the pitch indication, or Dioptra on uh, iOS. Uh, and there's a bunch of other apps out there, you know, virtual theodolite apps. You want to get one where you can take a picture uh, with the app, and you want it to be able to tell you, you know, how high um, it, or up or, or down your your camera is tilted. Okay. So you may need to bracket your observations. So we talked about how June 28th, which is technically the the day of the first quarter, but that's like four o'clock in the morning. So that's not exactly helpful. Uh, so we're going to bracket it by making an observation on June 27th. So just to run the numbers here, um, I'm getting the official illumination values from mooncalc.org. But then we actually go out in the field and we say we measure the elevation, the, the observation with our cell phone and our, um, our, our theodolite app like Diopthrace or, or our diopter. All right. So the question is, what is the expected elevation for when it's 50% illumination? Again, like we said, 50% illumination happened at 4 o'clock in the morning, so that wasn't exactly helpful. So we need to interpolate using these numbers. So let's take a look at the percent illumination. So in orange is the June 27th, and blue is June 28th, and we really want that our target of exactly 50% illumination. So how are we going to interpolate? Well, we're going to line that up with another scale, which was of our observed elevation. Again, orange is June 27th, blue is June 28th. Notice the scale is backwards. Um, the, uh, the degrees are, are going downwards. So we want to compute um, that indication right there, which is going to be 51 point something. Uh, I'm not going to go over the math here, but it's 51.3 degrees. All right, and that should look pretty reasonable uh, based on this, uh, this image. So our conclusion. So at solar noon on the equinox, uh, the angle of elevation will be 90 degrees minus your latitude facing south for northern hemisphere or facing north for the southern hemisphere. And that's covered in, in a number of my other videos talking about the equinox. So it's really, really easy. Take your latitude um, and subtract it from 90. 
okay? And if you're in the northern hemisphere, you're going to face south. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you're going to face north. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that value and we're going to compare that value to our interpolated value for the 50% illumination, the angle of elevation of a quarter moon at 50% elevation. So is it within 5 degrees? If it is, this supports the globe Earth model because this prediction was based purely on heliocentric uh, geometry. If it is not within 5 degrees, that's really evidence against the globe because if the Earth is a globe, then the globe geometry should, should match. And like I said, there is no comparable prediction we can make based on the flat Earth model um, because the moon kind of does its own thing and the moon is not exactly illuminated by the sun on the flat Earth. All right, so now let's repeat all of that with the full moon. And the geometry is a little bit different. Um, so, and so we'll streamline things a little bit. So again, full moon, so here's the same diagram. Let's zoom into a full moon. Um, and again, the moon, the, the sun is clearly on the right-hand side of our screen, so the sun rays are coming in. Uh, so, it, you know, it looks like it's a quarter moon in that small diagram, but what this is what we see from Earth is a fully illuminated moon. All right, so it's a 180-degree angle. This The moon is away from the sun, all right? And again, the flat Earth model, you could also say, well, you know, the moon is also 180 degrees away, but that's only if you look at azimuth, and that's only if you go over the North Pole. All right. So, in fact, you might not even say azimuth. You might actually say um, longitude. You know. Um, so this uh, this angle, it, it could you could say it's 180 degrees out of phase. So the problem with this uh, illustration is that the moon is on one path and the sun is over another path. So you can't really make the same comparison like, like we did with the, uh, the globe Earth, where they were literally 180 degrees out of phase because the sun was illuminating the moon. So in, in the globe Earth model, you know, we really are going to be measuring the, the angle of elevation, and we're going to compare it to the angle of elevation of the sun. So let's say we swap positions, and we're going to compare those angles, you know, the white angle to the yellow angle. And we simply can't do that on the flat Earth because they're, they're doing their own paths. All right, so our calculations are all going to be based on, on globe Earth geometry. The June and December solstice is when the sun is directly above one of the tropics. Okay, so again, in the flat Earth model, it's literally above the tropic. And with the globe Earth model, it is uh, the, the axis is tilted towards or away. Okay, so we've seen this diagram before. And again, in the heavy yellow, we have the Tropic of Cancer for the June solstice, Tropic of Capricorn for the December solstice. But now, let's add in the full moon. Let's have the full moon come in. And, well, where's the full moon? Well, if the full moon is directly opposite the sun, that means the full moon is above the Tropic of Capricorn in the June solstice. Likewise, for the December solstice over here on the right, the full moon should be above, directly above, the Tropic of Cancer, all right? Because we call it the, the, the full moon is 180 degrees out of phase with the Earth-Sun um, vector, all right? And again, this diagram, we've seen this diagram before, but let's actually add some details to this. Let's say the sun, let's say this is exactly the date of the December solstice. So the sun is over there. The southern uh, pole of the globe is tilted towards the sun. The north pole is tilted away. Um, and so let's draw the 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 tropics, the Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. Well, the moon is going to be directly above the Tropic of Cancer if it is on the December solstice. Now, it's not exactly going to be uh, directly away because we do have this plus or minus 5 degrees. So we've got a little bit of wiggle room, plus or minus 5 degrees from that, from that vector. All right. So let's uh, picture the sun being in either the June solstice or the December solstice. So wherever it's going to be in your location, let's say that is the December solstice sun. So in the June solstice, it's going to be the opposite solstice. So if it was the December solstice sun, that would be the location of the June solstice full moon. Okay, it's the opposite solstice. And again, we're giving ourselves a little bit of wiggle room, plus or minus five degrees um, because of that uh, orbital plane. So again, your challenge is to locate a full moon within two weeks of the solstice, which should be easy because full moon happens every month. 
and you're going to measure the angle of elevation when the full moon crosses the meridian. So again, you're going to look due south if you're in the northern hemisphere or due north if you're in the southern hemisphere. And when is the moon highest in the sky? You're going to measure the angle of elevation. Okay. Now, it it does say you, you could bracket the observations day before and day after. But what I found with my uh, exploration is that the, um, the percentage of illumination is moving so slowly when the moon is full that uh, you're going to get nearly 100%. Uh, so you, you might not have to bracket your, your observations at all. All right. So again, let's take a look. This is for Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Let's take a look at the full moon. And again, we want the full moon that is nearest the June solstice. So that's not June 5th. It's actually going to be July 5th. All right. The June solstice was uh, July, I, I'm sorry, June 21st. All right. Uh, so I th actually, I think it was June 20th this year. So here we are, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we're in mooncalc.org. So we're going to plug in the, the date. So we got we picked the city. We're going to pick the, the date, uh, July 5th, because this is for planning purposes. And again, the moon culmination, if you click on that number, moon culmination, the diagram will match and also the moon illumination will match. And it turns out that is 100.0% illuminated. So, I mean, you can't get a more perfect full moon than that. All right, so just measure the angle of elevation. Um, at uh, what would that be 106 in the morning of July 5th all right so again our conclusion so again solar noon on the June solstice you're at the angle of elevation to the Sun remember this is we are, we're comparing it to the the Sun's angle angle of elevation of the Sun will be 23.4 degrees northward for June solstice or 23.4 degrees southward for the December solstice now that's in comparison to where it was on the equinox for your location so you're going to compare this value uh, for the angle of elevation of the full moon to the opposite solstice. So if it's the June near the June solstice, you're going to compare it to where the sun would have been in the December solstice and vice versa. And you're going to ask yourself, is it within five degrees? If it's within five degrees, this does support the globe model. If it's not, it is evidence against the globe. And like I said, there's no comparable prediction based on the flat earth model. OK, so would you like to share your results? Because I'm really interested in what other people are, are measuring around the world. Uh, you can keep your exact location secret. Really, all you need to publicize is your latitude. OK, and, and yeah, other details like, you know, what's the exact date uh, that you that you made the observation. That's helpful as well. So you got several options. One is you can leave a comment below this video. You could shoot me an email, flatearthmath at gmail.com. If you want to be anonymous, uh, just just say that as well and i'll make a follow-up video in two weeks now it's it's coming upon two weeks from the actual june solstice so i will be making a video with the uh, submissions that i got from the uh, the last video i had which was on making measurements of the solstice all right the third option you have is you could post it into our message boards which are, are pretty much empty um, but the the website is flatearthmath.boards.net all right. And I would like to say a huge thank you to uh, Jim Jackson, Stringer News One, and SI Blacklock Hughes for uh, supporting this channel. Uh, you guys can support me on Patreon or you can uh, sign up for a channel membership here on YouTube. So if you're not subscribed, uh, please click the subscribe uh, button. And if you are subscribed, please click on the bell uh, and select uh, all notifications so that you won't miss a future video. And please consider joining. Uh, joining the membership so you get uh, member badges and you also get some member perks. All right. So uh, please get outside and make some measurements um, in and around the June solstice or the December solstice, depending on when you see this video. Uh, as always, your comments are welcome. And please be kind to each other. Thank you.